I'm Reverend Allie Bierman, and you're joining us today as we kick off Season 4 with a wrap-up of our first three seasons. Let's get metaphysical show, starting with D. Wallace. So every thought, every feeling we have has an electrical frequency to it, which shoots out into the universe, which is electromagnetic. So whatever we're sending out, positive or negative, the universe is looking to magnetize to that, and that gets sent back to us as the reality of our lives. That's why the more positive, uh, the more loving, the happier and more joyful you are, the more you literally magnetize to you the things that you want. I got a question for you. Take a moment and come up with your response, okay? What do you want in your life right now? What do you want? Well, I would say chances are you didn't tell me what you want. Chances are you tell me what you don't want. Am I right? You see, our natural state in life is happiness. And if you don't live in happiness, true happiness all the time, which has nothing to do with circumstances, which has nothing to do with events, which has nothing to do with anything outside of you, if you're not living in true happiness, it's because you've got all these blockades in the way of who you really are. And the fact that who you really are lives all the time, not some of the time, but all the time in true happiness. Don't be afraid to be yourself. I, I will I will say that um, everybody has a, you, you came here with a purpose and your purpose, it's not always going to line up with the, those that are around you but it's still your purpose <laughs> and you have to go down that road. And a lot of times that people are not going to like you for going down your path. People are, they're not going to agree. It's not going to lie. It, it, it'll be like mixing oil and water with, with some people, but it's meant for you. And it's okay to be different. It's okay to go against the grain. It's okay to not, go with the crowd you're being led by spirit to do you to do your purpose your purpose is going to require you to be in certain circles and to stay out of certain circles it's all okay just be you follow your own path your body is so complex and for those of you who are just listening right now when you hold your hand open with your fingers separated, energy runs one way. When you put your fingers together so they're all touching, it runs another way. The pads of your fingers have one kind of energy. The fingernails have a different kind of energy. The fingertips have a different kind of energy. And when you move your fingers in different configurations, you're sending energy I work solely with energy. I wouldn't go to anybody who doesn't. And when you're doing that, you have to be sure that the practitioner's clear. It's the first step I do, making sure the client's clear. If I'm training somebody else to do it, I make sure the practitioner is clear. So I know some really gifted people. They're not clear at all. There was one of my colleagues, every time I went to her, whatever the newest modality, whatever the newest machine was, whatever the newest philosophy was, surprise, surprise, it showed up as being present in me. That's not because it was present in me. It's because she was testing herself. Only she didn't know enough to clear it. She didn't know enough to recognize it. I had somebody else, no matter what emotional relationship thing was going on in her life, whenever she did work on me, 
her issues, her relationship issues showed up in me, only it wasn't showing up in me anything except her issues. I know on occasion, I've been working on somebody and I say, wait a minute, that's my energy, that's not you. And I know how to step aside, make sure that person is clear and none of my energy is going in there to influence or impact them. And then after I've cleared that out, then I can go on assisting that person. And mom said, and find something in every person you deal with that you like and emphasize that point. And her end to that was because you might end up in PTA with them someday. And when you listen to your story and you're telling your story over and over again for decades, for many years, that's how you get locked in to a past that you actually believe. And what you believe has nothing to do with the reality that actually happened. It's what you believe. Tell yourself something often enough and you believe it. And the worst part of that is you also start to think it's true because the the unfortunate disservice <laughs> that has been done um towards introverts one of them is that everything comes from a standpoint of why are introverts different not how are extroverts different not how do people process things differently but what's what's the deal with introverts and why can we not make it their deal that's already a flawed view because it comes from the perspective that there is something inherently deficient about introverts and therefore it needs to be fixed or therefore it needs to be corrected or it needs to be changed. Totally false. But when you're coming from even an academic standpoint where you're doing research and you're looking at introversion as the thing to change or why does it work this way as opposed to the normal way, you're coming in with a biased view. That's one. The second part of it is that I don't know, I don't know who did like the PR for introversion, but they're terrible at it because introversion has gotten such a bad rep. And this notion that if you are introverted, then you're shy or you're antisocial. And if you're not shy and you're not antisocial, therefore you cannot be an introvert is besides wrong, it's incredibly damaging because you have people who have no problem with having conversations with people. They have no problem with being in front of people. They have no problem with giving talks or doing all of these things, but they just need time to recover from that. They need a beat to just let their brain breathe so that they can know what to do or know how to proceed. But because there's this idea oh, you're smiling at people. You can't be an introvert. I never would have known. You don't strike me as an introvert at all. People who say that, I understand what they mean, <laughs> but what they are actually saying is that introverts are inherently deficient. You don't seem to be deficient. Why do you work <laughs> and also call yourself this deficient thing? That's what they're saying. That is not their necessary intent, but those are the things that are coming across. Some of the whales, gray whales in these lagoons are old enough to remember the whaling, the hunting. Whoa. Yet, and they represent forgiveness because they have forgiven the human race for all of the atrocities we as a species have committed against them. And if a whale can forgive you and bring its newborn baby so that you can love on it and trust you enough with its most prized possession, how can we not forgive? Each and every one of us comes here with that task, with that mission. And we each have a gift unique to us. There's one thing in the world you do better than anybody else can do it. 
there's one thing in the world I can do better than anybody else can do it. You know, for some people, that thing might be smiling with a smile that brightens a whole room. It might be having wisdom and clarity and instantly seeing a picture to know where to go to support somebody and what they need and in how they need it. Bad things happen in everybody's lives. People get hurt. They get sick. They lose their jobs. They get new jobs and they have to move away. Their friends move away. They move away. And when you are living in true happiness, your degree of true happiness determines how you get through moments and days and times. And what's happening is your unconscious mind is saying, oh, there's somebody who has characteristics of that early caretaker. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a sibling. Maybe it was a babysitter. It was someone responsible for your care when you were a little kid and you weren't happy about it, but you couldn't do anything about it as a little kid. So now you're going to get it right. So you're recreating that relationship and your partner's doing the same thing. So what you have is more of a locking horns than a content relationship and that's why when your relationship happens and you have a honeymoon period that might be three weeks it might even be three years but eventually you're it's gonna come crashing down so i'm having an extremely interesting experience i'm listening to you and every few minutes i'm indoors it's not raining indoors here Uh, water drips on me. <laughs> and it's never happened before. And I'm, do you have an idea what could be happening? This is yes, so I, weird. Yes, I do. Uh, Ali, it's your higher self cleansing whatever needs to be cleansed. Everybody will experience the energy. <laughs> Remember, I did say I'm going to do something I have yes. rarely done, but I feel so kindred with you and your audience that I not only spoke the words, I said I'm going to transmit the energy. That I <laughs> and you're such an empath you are feeling what I felt because what I didn't say is after I heard those words then the rain started opening up and I not only had the light cleanse of my cellular structure then the water and water became and to this day is my piece of nature that just melts away stress and everybody could access it. And it's got a power of transmutation in those ions that go beyond belief. Okay, that's what, okay. <laughs> I know. Because they're real water drops, <laughs> not imagining. <laughs> no, because Alan, you're such a high being. You're already high. You're already there. This won't happen to somebody who's closed because the other riddle I used to love opening with was one of my my uh, teachers, Muktananda, who said, what is what works best between the mind and a parachute? What's the similarities between the mind and a parachute? They only work when they're open. <laughs> I know things have been pretty shaky. I know you're feeling it lately, been feeling it on the daily. I know it's driving you crazy. People turning their backs and acting kind of shady. You put it in their work, but they still want to call you lazy. Feeling like you can't win. It's getting complicated. Almost like you're being blocked in. Got you feeling barricaded. It's been going on for too long. I know you're tired of waiting. So make a move you can't lose. No more hesitating. When you live in your life, some of you bitter like a grapefruit. Be grateful. Don't miss your chance. Be great too. Quit looking for things outside yourself to validate you. This your own path, even if you take a different route. And for the ones that aren't supportive of you, you got to X them right off of your screen. Click remove. Everybody's not supposed to understand your vision. Move in silence. You're the pilot. Make your own decision. Life's one big game, but don't be pressing your luck. Stand up tall, even if you fall flat on your butt. There's always another option. If you ever get stuck, stay humble. Take precaution, but don't never give up.